Now that I've settled on the final rules for circular chess, opening theory is starting to develop. I'm sure this will change a lot as more people play, but I thought I'd share a bit about some of the best moves you can play at the start of the game and some general development tips. I'll get to a couple of specific openings later in the video, but let's start out with some tips. Tip number one, don't develop your rooks too early. Rooks are very powerful since they can take advantage of the large infinite ranks. However, they take a long time to develop, so it's best to wait for the right opportunity to get them into the game. Developing them right away can take three or more moves. This is because rooks aren't very useful on the sixth rank early on, since the opponent's pawns prevent you from putting any pressure on their pieces. Meanwhile, your opponent can be getting their other pieces into the game, leading to an early loss in development. Tip number two, use your knights reactively. Knights are much weaker than the other pieces, since they can't take advantage of the larger board. They are still stronger than pawns, but they don't have nearly the same board coverage as other pieces. However, they still have the same advantage in circular chess as they do in standard chess. That is, they can attack any other piece without being attacked by it. Because of this, it's usually best to just develop your other pieces and only move your knights reactively in the opening, either to get them out of danger, or to directly attack or fork your opponent. Tip number three, bishops and queens rule the opening. Even though the bishops can't take advantage of the larger ranks, they can still make their way around the board very easily. Since they can be developed very easily and are set up to quickly defend your central knights, it is very important to develop your bishops early on. Queens have these advantages too, but can also take advantage of the larger ranks. This also makes it so that it's a lot harder to trap the queen, so there's really no reason not to get your queen out early. And that leads us into some openings. Since theory hasn't had a ton of time to develop, these will be a bit general and only a handful of moves long, but they should set you up for solid development. There are a couple of best options for white. Since it's important to develop the queen early, the two moves that I'll be looking at in this video are c3 and e4. The reason I don't recommend c4 is that it prevents white from defending their knight later on. Instead of going over every possibility, I thought it would be easier to go over a few of the main lines, so let's do that. First, white moves their pawn to c3, which opens up a potential attack on black's knight. If black responds by mirroring white, white can proceed to attack the knight on t8. Black is likely to respond with pawn to n4, defending the knight and putting pressure on one of white's knights with the queen. White can respond by moving the queen to c8, now putting pressure on both knights. Black can respond with pawn to o4, defending the other knight. Now, white still has two undefended knights, but there isn't much pressure on them. Any attack could be responded to by opening up either bishop to defend, so this might be a good time to start getting rooks into the game. The second opening line also starts with pawn to c3. This time, black responds by moving their pawn to q4. This allows their bishop to cover the t4 square, which prevents the white queen from attacking the knight on t8. To maintain the pressure on the central ring, white could move their queen to c2, attacking black's other knight. Black is likely to respond with pawn to o4, defending the knight. From here, white could potentially keep up some pressure by getting their light squared bishop into the game, or they could start developing the rooks. The third opening line starts with pawn to e4. This opens up both their queen and bishop. If black mirrors white with pawn to n4, white can continue the attack. Black could choose to defend with either their bishop or queen, but the queen move makes for a more exciting opening. The point of this move is that white must now defend their knight, since black is able to double attack the knight and queen on the next move. The fourth and final opening is the most interesting. It once again starts with pawn to e4, and black responding with pawn to n4. This time, white brings out their bishop to t7. This keeps the knight defended, while also pinning black's queen's pawn to the king, which prevents black from defending one of their knights with it. Black could either continue to mirror white by pinning the pawn on d2, but they could also respond with queen to h8. This defends both knights, which makes the pin less effective, and puts some pressure on the rook on a1. White's most likely response to this is to push their d2 pawn. This removes the pressure from the rook, and defends the previously undefended knight, which black could attack by moving their knight. These are just four possible openings for circular chess, and I'd love to hear feedback. Did you find any flaws in these openings? Or maybe some new interesting ideas? Let me know. I hope to expand the game to allow for further analysis in the near future, and I'd love to get some kind of competition going for the community, like possibly a tournament with prizes. I'm excited to see how strategy develops, and I hope you guys are excited to play. With that being said, that's all I have for now, I hope to see you in the next video.